Yo guys, what is going on? JP is back with another video, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 10 best places to visit in Australia. Now, quite some time ago, we watched a video that was the 10 best places to live in Australia, and I don't want those two videos to get confused because that is a completely different thing. Living somewhere and considering to move somewhere, you take a lot more into account, whereas visiting somewhere, you may look at completely different things, like how fun the things about the culture are like the bar culture and uh beaches yeah beaches you guys know what i'm saying here though um but anyways guys hit the like button hit subscribe and let's get right into this this video probably applies a bit more to me because i would consider visiting australia a lot more before i would consider moving to it so i'm super excited to check this out as i begin to plan for a possible trip to australia this summer or something of that nature so pretty exciting stuff here guys so let's get right into this this is part of my travel research Located between the Pacific and Indian Oceans, Australia is the world's largest island and its smallest continent. There's room to move in the land down under, and with so many sights to discover and enjoy, there's a great incentive to go on a walkabout adventure. Whether exploring the traditional lifestyle of the nation's aboriginal people, relaxing on a sun-kissed beach, or reveling the night away in a city hotspot, Australia has something special to offer every visitor. Here's a look at the best places to visit in Australia. So beautiful, bro. Number 10, Cairns. For its tropical climate, easygoing ambiance, and close proximity to the Great Barrier Reef, Cairns is one of Australia's most popular vacation destinations. Located on the northwest corner of Australia, Cairns is a provincial but stylish city with a population of around 150,000 people. Few coastal destinations feature more wildlife diversity and more opportunities for travel and adventures than pretty Cairns. What I loved about Cairns, or just from these pictures, is the mountains in the background with the water. Another thing, I noticed there was a pool, and I know that there's public pools in Sydney too. So that's, you guys have a lot of commodities that are public and just open to the, it's like, what the hell? Lucky you, I wanna see what Australian taxes are like. That's what I'd be curious about. We have nothing like that. There's no public pools in the United States. Number nine, no way. Adelaide. A laid back city with a peaceful atmosphere, Adelaide's quiet streets are lined with bars, which make it a surprisingly fun place to go out in. <laughs> Nicknamed the city of churches, the lofty spires dotted around here and there add to the picturesque nature of Adelaide. And there are lots of nice parks and green spaces for visitors to enjoy. Surrounded by verdant land, which is perfect for cultivating vineyards, make sure to try some of the refreshing wines before you head off on your travels. Oh. You don't need to tell me twice. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. Is that a vineyard? <laughs> Number 8. Tasmania. The island state of Tasmania may be isolated from the rest of the country, but it still remains one of the best places to visit in Australia. Almost half of its area is protected as the government looks to preserve the natural riches. We and that's where Tasmanian Devil comes from, doesn't it? Sorry for pausing, y'all. I've heard of Tasmania before, though. It's been in a couple of videos we've watched. 
beautiful. Almost half of its area is protected as the government looks to preserve the natural riches. With desolate wilderness and alpine plateaus interspersed with stunning white beaches, waterfalls, and forests, exploring its terrain is simply mesmerizing. Taking a boat trip along its craggy coast is equally rewarding, and you can even see dolphins, penguins, and seals along the way. Penguins? Hey. Oh, that's that water, bro. I just want to dive in. Oh. Number seven. Oh, Kurt. man. When the sand is that white and the water is that turquoise, it's like. Book my plane ticket, man. Oh, per is this Perth? I've heard of Perth. We that was in the best places to live, so it's also one of the best places to visit. That's quite the combo right Perth. there. Located on Australia's southwestern coastline, Perth is the country's fourth largest city and is capital of Western Australia. Isolated from other major cities in Australia, Perth has developed its own unique character. A youthful place, Perth is nearly always bathed in sunshine, and its stunning beaches are perfect for kicking back and relaxing on. Away from the beach, there are lots of outdoor activities for you to enjoy. With a huge variety of bars, cafes, and restaurants, isolated Perth is the perfect getaway to the rest of the West. Okay. When I come visit, bro, I've, you, I don't even want to tell you guys how much time I'm spending on those beaches. Man. Number six, Brisbane. A popular tourist destination, Brisbane is a lively, dynamic place that is bathed in beautiful sunshine year round. Located in the Sunshine State, many visitors stop by on their way to the fantastic resorts and beaches that lie to its north and south. Set alongside the Brisbane River, the city's fantastic climate means that outdoor activities are very popular here. A fun and friendly city, Brisbane's vibrant music scene has made it one of the music capitals of the world, and there are lots of venues in town where you can enjoy a great show. Number 5. Kakadu National Park Occupied by Aboriginal people for over 40,000 years, Kakadu National Park has over 5,000 ancient rock art sites, which are fascinating to visit. It is a place of immense cultural and natural significance. The park is huge and contains some stunning natural sites, which make it well worth a visit. With diverse ecosystems contained within the park's boundaries, you can be hiking through deserted sandstone escarpments one minute and bathing in waterfalls and pools the next before later on learning about some of the ancient wow. rock paintings. That national park is a go-to. I don't think it really told me where it is though, like how close it is to other cities, but this is so cool to me. It tells you so much about the, the way they lived. Really, the way of life, crazy. Number four, Melbourne. Second only to okay, Sydney, yep. Melbourne is a cool cosmopolitan city that is considered by many to be Australia's capital of culture. With lots of great art galleries, some fantastic museums, and a lively music scene, there is always something to see or do in the country's second largest city. I think for me, the 
the biggest problem I come across with Melbourne and Sydney is Sydney I feel like you have to visit but more so what do I get out of going if I'm if I'm going to be in Sydney because that's where you fly into what do I get out of going to Melbourne like is it that distinguishable from Sydney because from the videos and things I've seen they just say oh they're both too cosmopolitan multicultural like honestly guys tell me in the comments is it and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way like oh Melbourne's not that no, it's like, is it really worth going out of the way? And I'm not saying it's out of the way, but you know what I mean. Like, let me know. Due to its high quality of how, life, how different citizens are they? from around the world have flocked to the streets. Its multicultural population is reflected in the delicious cuisine on offer and the unique neighborhoods that make it such a fascinating place to explore. Number three, Great Barrier Reef. The largest coral reef system on the face of the earth, the Great Barrier Reef is simply colossal. Yeah. Stretching for over 1,400 miles, it is <laughs> remarkably visible from space with 900 islands dotting this enormous ecosystem. Snorkeling and scuba diving are the best ways to experience the joys of the rich underwater world, while boat trips, kayaking, and even helicopter rides offer another view of the reef's gargantuan proportions. Gently sailing through the perfect turquoise waters, dolphins, sea turtles, and the reef itself visible below the waves is an unforgettable experience. So beautiful. And this just hi highlights like nature to me. You just see an ecosystem. You can see an entire ecosystem just by putting your head underwater. It's amazing. I would love to do, I would love to see the Great Barrier, Barrier Reef in person. Helicopter ride would be crazy too. Yeah. You gotta have some money for that though. You hit the like button, guys. <laughs> hit the damn like button. I wanna go on a helicopter ride. Two, Uluru Katajuta National Park. World famous spectacular Uluru is instantly recognizable due to its ruddy red hue. The immense rock Ooh. is one of Australia's most prominent landmarks. And the main reason the national park is such a popular destination. The equally mesmerizing rock formations of Katajuta are fantastic to wander around, and there are lots of activities to enjoy. Owned by the Anangu Aboriginal people, the site is of great spiritual significance to them. You can learn more about their way of life at the Cultural Center. So, let me tell you all about this. And this is similar to how I feel about Stonehenge in England. Amazing significance. There's a lot of history, and it is, it is crazy. But am I going to go out of my way to see a rock? Probably not. Like, let's be honest here. I'm not going to go out of my way to see a rock. And I'm not saying that, like, oh, if you did that, then you're an idiot. That's not what I mean. It's just me personally, I can appreciate something just by seeing it, like, through a video or photo and things like that. Like, me going there doesn't really change that much. I don't know. That's just, and it, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Just with things like this, where it's just a singular structure, it's like, is it really worth, and this is probably way out of the way. That's just a guess. If it's close to other stuff, sure, but in the case of Stonehenge, it's kind of in the middle, and I'm not going to have a car, most likely, when I'm in Australia. I'm going to have to use public transportation and things, so I don't know. There's a lot to figure out, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. I'm new to everything, so please don't get offended with anything I say. But... Number one, Sydney, Sydney. Yep. almost picture perfect. We'll Sydney be there for is sure. a fantastic city with a lot going for it. Don't a have modern a <laughs> city with a long history, Sydney is defined by its scenic harbor. 
The region's first inhabitants lived along the harbor's bank for thousands of years. Today, ferries take visitors for cruises under the famed Sydney Harbor Bridge and past the iconic Sydney Opera House. Beautiful Bondi Beach is a must-see also when visiting Sydney as well. Surrounding the city, there are a number of brilliant national parks for visitors and locals alike to enjoy, as well as some interesting and educational historical sites. It's a great video and um, it gets me really excited to visit. There's still a lot of things I have to learn about and plan. The public transportation network, the timeline, the itinerary, so many things that have to be figured out. And a lot of that will come with the knowledge that is gained from watching these videos. So I really appreciate you guys for coming along and learning with me. And for all the support you guys have shown, we're almost at 15,000 subscribers. Absolute nuts. Absolutely nuts. That was kind of weird. Absolute nuts. Okay, nobody clipped that. Anyways, hit the like button, guys. Hit the subscribe button. And with that being said, I'm going to catch you all in the next one.